was the uh, EB, ETBF Vice President, the uh, uh, European Temporary Bowling Federation Vice President, and also the Director of the European Bowling Tour, the EBT. Kim, uh, tell us a little bit about the fact that we're in Qatar, and Qatar doesn't appear to be in Europe, and this is an EBT till stop. Well, Qatar is not that far away from Europe, but in any case, uh, for a couple of years ago, we we started conversations with, with the Qatar Bowling Federation, uh, showing interest for being a part of the European Bowling Tour, because uh, our concept was fitting more or less with, uh, with the way they saw the tournament and, and, and the future of it. And at the same moment, we were inspired by, uh, by, uh, by golf, uh, going many places outside Europe. So we simply decided to open the European Bowling Tour as of 2008 for tournaments outside Europe, if they could provide a certain uh, big prize pool and, and, and other characteristics which made them extraordinary uh, in, in terms of, uh, of the conditions they could offer players, uh, etc. So that's the background. I know the Qatar Art Tour has been going, this is the ninth Qatar Open, and it's the last two, correct? That have been EPT ranking tournaments? Yes, in 2008, where we opened for tours, uh, for, for stops outside Europe for the first time, and now in nine, and they are definitely again with us in 10. All right, so am I right in saying that the, it's the last two tournaments have both been won by a lady? Yes, that's correct. So do you think we're going to get a male winner this year? Well, there's a, there's a group of very good ladies players here and a group of very good main players. I would say it's it's a one-to-one. -one. Okay, excellent. That's good news. Um, I mean, the EBT 2009 tour, this is the final stop on the tour. It's, uh, and it's, it's looking like a pretty tight race at the top. Can you tell me what your opinion is in terms of the... Uh, current status and who's likely to uh, go through? Yeah, if we take the men's division first, uh, the last two European Bowling Tour winners, Osko Palerma from, from Finland, uh, is the top again. And is about, as I remember by heart, 60 points ahead of Dominic Barrett from England, the, the region European men champion, by the way, for, for not that many months ago. Uh, it looks likely that it will be uh, Palerma again. He more or less needs not to qualify and Barrett needs to be in top three. So uh, that combination doesn't sound likely. So I, I presume we, for the third time we'll see the dual-handed player Palerma wins the European Bowling Tour. The ladies the same or is that a bit... Uh, no, it's very close between uh, leading Nigi Ainge from England, uh, which never have been at top of the European Bowling Tour be before. Uh, as far as I know, I can't even remember having seen her in the top 16 ranking before. No, this is the Nikki, I was talking to her earlier on, and it's her first real attempt to bowl in Europe, and she's done particularly well. Yes, she has, and she has been very steady, also playing far most of the stops. Uh, and then we have, uh, closely following her, uh, Nicole Sanders from the Netherlands, which was third last year, and uh, only a few pins after her, the last year's tour winner, uh, Nina Flag from Sweden. So everything can happen here. It, it, it'll be one of those three. An exciting 2009 so. Yeah, definitely in the women's division for sure. Okay. So what about 2010? What are your plans for 2010? Yeah, we normally we publish the tour uh, around 1st July, the year before the, uh, I mean half a year before the tour begins. And uh, and we have changed the tour a little bit next year with, uh, with a new uh, category called EBT satellites with a little lower demand of prize funds and and other characteristics to, so to say, make our feeding system better. So we have more, a little smaller tournaments. We have now new tournaments coming up from Poland, from Russia, uh, one in Italy, uh, other places where we normally do not go. And, uh, and, and in addition, all the regular tournaments, more or less, are in again. So next year's tour looks to be the biggest uh, in the history of the EBT. I've not had a great deal of experience at the EBT before. In fact, this is the first time I've uh, actually been at an EBT uh, ranking events. Um, and it's also uh, in the Middle East, it's in the Gulf countries and in Qatar. Uh, I quite like the, the uh, feeling over here of bowling. Bowling is very, very popular over here from a point of view of the support it gets, uh, the financial support, if nothing else. Um, how do you feel? Is, is there any noticeable difference between coming to a Middle Eastern state and say the, the traditional, if there is such a thing as a traditional European venue? There are some differences, uh, but, but 
I would say they, it's my third stay here in Qatar uh, myself, and I have been in the, in the full duration of, of the tournament in the year before they went into the tour to give them a lot of advice on what they should change so they came closer to the European format. Uh, and again last year and, and, and now this year. And of course there are some changes, but I would say they're marginal. The Qataris really wanted to adopt to the European uh, requirements. So they have adopted all the rules, all the way we are doing the tour, what, what Europe normally does. So from that perspective, uh, I wouldn't say it's a big difference. No, the, the attitudes over here are very much a can-do attitude. They, they take a problem and uh, decide they're going to fix it. And, uh, they're very professional. Yeah, I, I find the I find the the, the guitar is very dynamic and uh, and uh, for me rather rather easy to work with. Uh, of course, there's some some differences here, but I think their hospitality is great and oh, and they and they pick up everyone from the airport and takes care of a lot of small things. So, from from a direct st standpoint, I'm we're very satisfied with the cooperation. Excellent, thank you. I mean. Uh, you know, and the European bowling tour now, it's growing, it's in popularity as well as obviously in terms of tour stops, etc. Um, how does it compare, in your opinion, against, say, the, the PBA, the uh, Professional Bowlers Association tour, the American tour? Well, from, this, from the beginning, 10, 11 years ago, when we had the first tour, uh, it was not our dream to, to, to be able to match up with the PBA. But on the other side, I would say that the last couple of years has proven that we are coming closer. Um, PBA is still, uh, price money wise, uh, higher than the European Bowling Tour, indeed they are. Uh, but they also have relatively few stops now, and, uh, uh, and every year, we, until now at least, we have had an increased average of price sum per tournament. We also see more and more PBA players coming over, actually. It's true, yes, it's true. Uh, we have uh, Mika Kovalami. Uh, yeah, in this we have... Um, uh, Tim Max come over as well. Mika Kovalami. And we the have other PBA star, of course, Stu Williams from England. Stu Williams, <laughs> Tim <laughs> Mack. We have Pat Healy here as well. Pat Healy, yes. So, um, it's normal now that not all, but many, many of the stops have PBA players. Uh, if you look at the difference, PBA is a, so to say, one-string organization. It's it's It's... It's a privately owned company, and if someone tomorrow uh, wants to uh, wants to close down PBA, which I have no signals about, just to, to yeah. say, well, it, 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 it might happen. Uh, when we say the EBT is a concept owned by the European Champion Bowling Federation, and where each tournament joins voluntarily as a kind of franchise taker, mm -hmm. so even a couple of tournaments decide to leave, the turn the tour will still live. Exactly. So there's two different ways of doing it, and. Uh, and definitely Europe have a lot of steps to walk still to match up with PBA. But I think we are in the right direction. And one another day, the difference will not be so big. Well, yeah, I've certainly enjoyed my first experience of the EBT. Oh, good. And, uh, and uh, I'm hoping it's going to be an exciting final. It certainly looks that way. The centre here is phenomenal. Um, some of the bowling seems particularly good, especially with the class of field that we're going to be here. Yeah, uh, definitely, there's a lot of good bowlers here. And and, and to finish the PBA question, I mean, PBA and the EBT started already for, uh, for about three quarters of years ago, discussions. And, uh, and, and you will see in the coming years, I think, more fields where, where the two organizations will cooperate rather than compete. Because I think there will be a lot of synergy items in between PBA and the EBT in forms of, of uh, qualified players from the European Bowling Tour, so especially in the World Series. In, uh, in August, September. We had one this year. We're still negotiating about how it will be next year. And uh, you might see in the future maybe some, some matches going on between EBT and PBA. Various stuff are, are under consideration. Excellent. That's good news. Well, thank you for your time, Ken. It's a great uh, opportunity to actually meet for the first time and to uh, come to the interview. Good luck with the uh, tour uh, for 2010. Thank you very much.